everybody. It's my 11 Wednesday, August 17th, 2016. And I'm walking to work. It's about 9 a.m. And I figured today I would just sort of paint a picture of uh, what it is I'm doing here with these videos. Uh, my career, um, Python programming language, the field of SEO, my role in helping to homeschool my daughter, and how it all just sort of fits together as one big thing. Uh, there are plenty of people who, um, for professional and other reasons, do have to compartmentalize uh, their life, their way of being, their mode of behavior, and thinking alters when they move from the work environment to the uh, home environment. And it's, you know, it's because of appropriateness. Uh, it happens to be that now more than ever, I just love what I do. Um, my career has taken this uh, wonderful turn where I actually get to program in my language of choice to do the sort of tasks that are uh, there to be done, that I recognize that need to be done, that my boss recognize needs to be done, and it creates all this positive same direction uh, synergy, such as it were. And it's uh, a feeling I do in fact like to take home, and when I talk to my daughter, uh, and we just are trying to make conversation, that conversation very often turns to just uh, science, let's call it, you know, uh, the entertainment side of science, the uh, inspirational bits. And I've enjoyed talking to her lately about by listening to uh, Richard Feynman and uh, how he's so entertaining and how there's this uh, blurred line of distinction between uh, stuff you find that you actually just really love to do and stuff that you do because uh, people appreciate you doing it, you get paid for it, you're a contributing member of society, and in other words, uh, that you do for a living. And uh, the closer these things get aligned, the, you know, more, I guess it's almost like uh, double purpose, your money-making time gets spent. You get your sort of both professional and uh, personal satisfaction and uh, because it all gets done in the same time blocks there's that much more time left over for other things uh, unfortunately now in my situation that other thing seems to be the commute with uh, about a half hour on the train and uh, 20 minutes on one side and 15 minutes on the other of a walk and uh, that's just too much time each direction uh, so that's uh, over an hour spent in transport twice a day, two hours a day out of you know, your waking hours. And, uh, that's way too much. One of the reasons I came to New York is to get that commute down to where the great job market was for, I believe it was 13 years. My dad did daily commute from the suburbs of Philadelphia to the uh, usually textile district of New York. And, uh, I think it made him an old man early. And much of what I'm doing is to not reproduce my father's mistakes. He got into an industry because he started out in one for one reason, following his heart and switched to another because, you know, everyone told him uh, that's where he needed to be. The industry dried up underneath of him um, in order to be where the good enough paying jobs were to satisfy his uh, his sitcom life, he would have had to have moved to uh, New York at the very least, and uh, perhaps even overseas where all the knitting mills were uh, moved to. So my path was a little different. I started out, you know, following my dreams just like he did. He wanted to be a NASA aeronautical engineer, build rocket ships basically. I wanted to be an engineer, uh, probably mechanical, similar dreams instead of rocket 
ships, my interest was the uh, colonizing of space, you know, uh, space stations, you know, uh, colonies on the moon, and asteroid belts and all that, and uh, switched out of it because I basically felt like I couldn't make the cut that is in that year one stuff for like, uh, you know, physics and uh, uh, calculus college level that's designed to weed people out, which I have subsequently learned is highly intentional because they don't want people like building bridges and stuff who don't really know what they're doing. So uh, a lot of trust is handed over to engineers and uh, I guess uh, is, uh, scientists. So there's a uh, real weeding out in that year one. And uh, you know, I followed my heart. I really liked art and industrial design, so I switched to that program in Drexel. And that was before the web, but after the internet, I was already on, say, the Commodore Vax, for example, participating in the uh, you know, CompSys Amiga news groups. And uh, you, I was kind of technical, kind of sciencey, but then switched to art and design. And then along comes the web and my skills become much more valuable. And, but I go the jack of all trades route. I really don't have my ideas together, uh, nor the intense drive to uh, turn it into a business. So I always have been a uh, clock puncher working for the man. And uh, you know, I don't mind that too much. Uh, it gives a lot more of my time for uh, myself. And uh, I guess uh, <clears throat> now that I have actually been on a non-moving target for a few years, Python, my skills are actually maturing in a way where they never had in the past. They always hit these flying off the cliff dead ends, worse than dead ends, uh, disasters. Uh, the Amigo is one of them a lot of time into, you know, the understanding and, I guess, script-like programming of the Amiga. I knew quite a few scripting languages there, from uh, Amiga script to A-Rex to Scala, and, uh, and probably even a few others. But um, that was uh, self-evidently a dead end professionally. So I switched to Active Server Pages, which was the Microsoft world of uh, Visual Basic Scripting Edition, or, you know, more commonly called VB Script, which went together with a handful of other technologies like IIS and SQL Server. And while IIS and SQL Server are still around in flagship Microsoft products, Active Server Page not so much, or at least it's around in another form. And that other form is most decidedly not VB Script. Uh, it's a lot more difficult. It has uh, very different uh, presumptions. And uh, yeah, so let's see. No more going off the cliff with tech. So I made a study of it. I realized that uh, Linux was the OS platform that I needed to be on, Unix in general, but Linux in particular. And uh, I realized that I had to choose a uh, timeless programming language, something that was relevant yesterday and is likely to be relevant tomorrow, so that my skills could gradually improve and mature along with it, so that I'd be on the trajectory that instead of going like this, whoa, it just keeps going like this. And uh, I think that's a very reasonable request, and I held out, but then I tried languages too. I didn't really hold out. I tried JavaScript on the server in the days when that had to be Helma after Netscape uh, server and uh, Active Server page went away as avenues of doing VBScript on the server. So VBScript has really always been on the server since the dawn of the web, or at least uh, commercial web servers. Um, But uh, it went out of popularity for a while, right when I was interested in it, and all there was was Helma. This was a little before Node.js, uh, so I abandoned that. I 
tried to take up Ruby because of Ruby on Rails, immediately hated Rails because of its, uh, you know, conceptual contrast with systems I had built, frankly quite similar under VBScript, but I liked my conventions better than their conventions, so I never really took up Rails. Uh, but I was like, okay, let me try Ruby. So I tried Ruby, and uh, not for me. Uh, you know, it, it'd be a long video for me to list all the reasons, but you know, it might even amount to sour grapes. I tried, it didn't work, sour grapes. Uh, but the sour grapes did not kick in when I tried Python. Python was like, hmm, okay, no, no curly brackets and dents. Okay, let me give this white space thing a try. And just like uh, everyone says about Python, once you give it a try, once you suspend your disbelief, your automatic resistance and dislike for the Python approach of using a white space to delimit code blocks, you'll fall in love with it and never be able to live without it. At least that's how it's going to feel. And so I went through that process. And then I started realizing things like how the import system works. And when you really have tried to do the types of things that Python's import system is addressing, like achieve you know, modular design uh, in your um, software with minimal effort, just by nature of which files you put your functions into, you don't even have to be programming in an object-oriented style, you know, the kind that grew out of uh, Simula and Modula 3 that, you know, so I guess was most famously expressed in Smalltalk and then everyone's sort of been, you know, uh, copying Smalltalk ever since. Uh, but basically there's this uh, style of object-oriented programming that if you do OO, if you do object-oriented, you use this style. And the style, frankly, is very cumbersome for many, many jobs, many jobs that I do daily. When you're thinking in terms of getting the job done, quick one-offs, you really don't want to analyze the whole world and break it into objects and responsibilities. You just want to get the job done. OO is uh, a little less like a chisel and a little more like molding clay. Um, so I really enjoyed getting what turned out, in, in retrospect, being the benefits of an object-oriented language and design without having to uh, pay the price of re structuring how I think about and approach and tackle problems. It's just that the process of thinking about and approaching and tackling problems became much easier under Python. Period. No doubt. Uh, I found the first language since VBScript, believe it or not. I actually kind of sort of enjoyed VBScript, but I found the first language since VBScript that I could really buy into and, uh, and love. Um, and uh, that was over five years ago, and you'd think I'd be a Python expert and a, uh, a Vim expert. I switched to Vim and Linux at about the same time. But, you know, after five, six, seven years, you know, that's really when you just start to get all that high comfort level. I would not call it mastery yet. It's simply competence in every environment. I mean, Python 3.7, I've been working like this. I've been 3.5, things like that, work like that. I'm in the Vim text editor, so I can just sort of stop thinking and start coding. <laughs> uh, muscle memory, stop thinking about what my hands are doing on the keyboard, and just think in Python, think purely in Python, and almost see it appear uh, the way I think it on the screen. That's uh, a lot like how that is. Uh, or, I'm going to be doing a lot of experimentation, being interested in the uh, way objects uh, actually appear in memory while the program's being run, and I want to stop and I want to take a close look at that. And uh, when I'm in that mode, I'm in Jupyter Notebook. And then it's uh, 
it was a it was originally my plan to have Vim and Jupyter Notebook running at the same time with my uh, program package modules in Vim and my main program, the thing triggering it off at the top level of uh, scope in Jupyter Notebook. But I have consequently learned, subsequently learned, that uh, you can import other Jupyter Notebooks as uh, Python packages or modules. And when I learned that, I'm like, oh, I can have these external libraries in rapid development right along with the code I'm keeping in main. And that is how I'm working right now, keeping almost everything in Jupyter Notebook until a project really matures. And then I move it over into just plain old .py files, usually to be uh, scheduled or otherwise uh, around for uh, some sort of running that doesn't require going into it a lot and making it modifications. Anything that's going to be modified regularly, <clears throat> I keep in Jupyter Notebook, soon to be Jupyter Labs, as its primary execution environment. And really, in SEO, a lot of my stuff is going to be that way because um, a lot of stuff is modified and you know, adapted to your use case every time you run it. That's just the nature of SEO. Every investigation tends to be a little subtly different. So, um, yeah, okay, bring it on all together. I'm almost at work and this was a bringing it together video. Um, as I raise to be moving from merely competent in Linux, Python, Vim, and Git uh, to being really adept, I want to um, adapt as much of that into the education for my daughter as possible to give her a sort of head start in life at the earliest reasonable age without turning her off to the whole thing, just invigorate her interest in science, for example, and uh, you know, let it evolve naturally uh, from her ends, but through good example, doing for Addy all the things I sort of wish my parents had done for me to give me that extra super head start so that on the chance you want to really go for it, really make those high grabs at an achievement on sort of the humankind level, uh, you're equipped to do it. You know, missed the opportunity for myself, but let's see what I can do starting from, uh, you know, from here. And uh, let's see uh, what I can do if she's up for it, and if not, being fully supportive in whatever avenue she goes in life. But that's sort of the big picture. That's what I'm doing. And uh, if you're interested in that sort of stuff, following along the little insights and discoveries and commentary along the way, as I sort of massage it, perhaps some other revenue making thing in my life uh, so that I am no longer a nine to five clock puncher, but I'm on a long time frame for that. You can follow along. Plenty of other people who I listen to at this point have fully gone that route. I think Michael Kennedy have talked Python to me. Maybe that's in my future. Maybe I go all Patreon, but I'm doing it in small steps, starting with a YouTube, you know, chunk change uh, ad revenue and perhaps some sort of training session, but I don't edit. I just do these things in one take, uh, talking naturally. If I like them, I publish them. If I don't like them, I delete them. And, uh, you know, it's a heck of a lot more efficient than um, editing. Too much time in life is spent on editing. And aside from stopping and getting these last few words in, this is the kind of stuff I just do every, you know, day. I, uh, on my walk to and from work, it's time I have to spend anyway. 20 minutes, 15 minutes. Well, here we are at 20 minutes. I'll wrap up there. Thanks for joining me. Hope to talk to you soon. And don't forget to subscribe.